pretty much has limitless potential on that end, um, like defensive player of the year type of potential. Alrighty, everybody, welcome to what I'm going to call episode 2 of NBA Now. I'm Dom, and let's kind of get right into things here. So, today, we are going to be talking about Precious Achua. Uh, I hope I said that right. <laughs> um, I think I said it right. But yeah, so he just got traded um, this last offseason um, in the Kyle Lowry trade. Pretty underrated um, you know, piece to be thrown in there. Um, obviously, Drogic was you know put in the trade to... Um, match money wise but um, a huge big time return I think for the Raptors and I think um, most likely pretty quickly he's gonna um, either become that starting center or um, just play the majority of minutes at center I know he's a little bit smaller but he's definitely a defensive guy so I think he can kind of hold his own there um, he's about the same size as a Montrezl Harrow height wise at 6'8 but he's more of a defensive guy than Harrow is, whereas Harrow is more of like an offensive energy guy. So I think Achua is going to have a really great um, impact on their center rotation, especially with only like Ken Birch and I don't even know who their other center is, but not a like fantastic center rotation. Obviously, Ken Birch had a decent year last year for, um, I believe it was a Magic, it might have been the Raptors, I don't even remember. Um, but he had a decent year last year, I know. And um, he's not a terrible like backup center, um, but Achua... I think is quickly gonna gonna um, have some eyes look his way just for you know the defensive savvy that he's gonna bring um, especially if he's playing next to Pascal Siakam um, or um, I believe Siakam's supposed to be out for a little while so I assume Scotty Barnes will be starting at that four position and I think those two are gonna really create a defensive dynamic down low um, next to some of the other good defenders on the team obviously Fred Van Vliet's a little bit smaller of a guard um, but he's known to be a good defender, and um, Ojan and Nobi pretty much has limitless potential on that end, um, like defensive player of the year type of potential. But I think Achua has even more, has the most defensive potential on the team, um, and that's on a team with Scotty Barnes and Ojan and Nobi. I mean, this was a guy that, you know, coming out of high school was a really high recruit, um, was going to go to Memphis with James Wiseman before the whole Penny Hardaway, James Wiseman situation happened, and he didn't really get to play in college, right? Um, but we thought when he went there that he was gonna be it was gonna be like a super team almost. Um, because they got multiple um like high like we thought it was gonna be the next Zion Duke situation, right? Where they had a multiple of these high um recruits coming out of high school ready to one just go for one year, right? Obviously we know um I believe uh, Amani Bates also committed to Memphis, so we'll have to see what he does there. But seems to be a school that's starting to get, um, you know, a, a really good amount of super high recruits. Um, potentially, you know, trying to creep its way into that, um, you know, Duke and Kentucky category as of recently. That you know, really just get those high recruits and go from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, last year with the Heat, a uh, in only 12 minutes per game. Um, he shot 54% from the field, averaged five points and three rebounds. So not a ton, right? You look at his production and you're kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, we can kind of throw him in this trade. You know, he's a young guy. Maybe they'll want him or whatever. Um, obviously, I think the Heat know what he has, especially, um, you know, having him on that roster. Him him and Bam, just that duo could have been so good um, defensively, although I don't think really either of them could play the four. So it makes sense why Miami was like, all right, let's get value out of him. Let's go get Kyle Lowry. And it worked out for them. They got Kyle Lowry, right? But this is a guy that was projected to be um, a lottery pick. He fell all the way to 20th to Miami and then didn't play much because he was behind one of the best defensive bigs in the league in Bam Adebayo, right? Um, we know what Bam is. He's switchable through all five positions, arguable defensive player of the year. Um, and one of the main reasons that the Heat made the finals um a few years ago so yeah super super solid pickup that the raptors got there and the reason that i think that he's just gonna have such an underrated season well not underrated season but he's gonna shock the world here pretty quickly um is like i said i believe siakam is out 
for a little bit to start the season. And so that's going to give these younger guys the opportunity to get the ball. You know what I mean? That like Nick Nurse is going to look for that guy that can come out and score. And though though I don't think that's going to be Achua, that's going to give him more touches immediately in this offense. Um, and I think it'll probably be Fred Van Vliet or OG Ananobi that steps up in that role. Um, we'll see what Scotty Barnes does. But it's going to give Achua more touches immediately in the offense. He's already probably going to double his minutes regardless if he starts. And it's going to be a super good situation for him because you look at that team in the future. Obviously, we've seen Pascal getting thrown in a lot of trade rumors. We know that there's at least a little bit of tension. Maybe it's overblown between him and Nick Nurse. Um, and so if he ends up getting traded and um, or if Fred Van Vliet ends up getting traded and say maybe they go after Ben Simmons and they trade Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam for him, right? That'd be a pretty big haul for the Sixers. Maybe the, they don't have to throw in as many first round picks, right? You would, if in that situation, you see a super, super switchable team here in Toronto, right? Um, but we'll just leave that as a scenario. If you guys want a video on what I think, um, where I think Ben Simmons is going to end up going, um, obviously we know that he's now not going to play for the Sixers again. Um, based on reports so if you guys want a video to see where i think he might go and some of the best fits in my opinion let me know and i can make sure to pump that out for you guys but yeah i mean achua him og and scotty barnes as a front court is disgustingly phenomenal as a not only a, a defensive front court this coming season but also probably for the next five to eight years because uh og on Anobi, i believe is like 24 so that would be towards the end of his prime. But for the next like five to eight years, at least half a decade, that um, suits up to be one of, if not the best, um, young, up and coming, and strong defensive, um, switchable defensive front courts in the entire league. Because like if I had to throw, if say you're playing the Lakers, right? We know the Lakers, one of the top teams in the NBA. They made moves and stuff, right? Russell Westbrook, you're gonna sag off. But you also still have a decent defender in Fred Van Vliet on him, okay? Um, whether they're running Monk or Taylor Horton Tucker or whoever at the two. Um, you got Gary uh, Trent, who's probably the weakest link in the offensive-defensive lineup. But he's a really good scorer and um, can provide a good scoring punch for them on the perimeter. Um, so that's all right if you're playing the Lakers, right? Because that's going to be their weakest position most likely as well. Maybe center, um, depending on who they start. Um, and how they really run the lineups, but um, you have Gary Trent, who's gonna—he's not gonna be a minus defender, I don't think. I think he'll be a s somewhat all right defender. You know, it doesn't hurt to have him out there like it hurts to have a player like Trey Young out there. Although Trey Young's offense clearly makes up for it. But um, you know, that's kind of your one weak point. And then you've got OG Ananobi, who it, he'd probably be guarding LeBron, and if he got switched off on AD. He wouldn't be a guy that I'd be scared about, um, especially with AD's reluctancy to, you know, kind of try and score in the paint. Um, or then you've got Scotty Barnes or Siakam on Anthony Davis, right? Um, and either way, that's a decent matchup. Um, Scotty Barnes or Siakam, I'd be okay if they got switched on to LeBron. Um, Siakam less for some other perimeter players. But if Scotty Barnes got switched on to like a Westbrook or a Taylor Horton Tucker or something, I'm not worried about him. You know what I mean? He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism to keep up with him and, you know, at least hold his own. Right. Um, I think Westbrook might be able to get him off the bounce or whatever to get into the paint. But Scotty Barnes might be able to recover on that or something. So I'm OK with him getting switched off. I'm OK with OG getting switched off LeBron and Achua. I'm OK if he gets switched on to either of them. Um, if AD's playing center, I'm okay with him guarding AD because nobody's going to stop these guys because we know superstars, they can do it, especially, you know, top 10, top 15 talents like these guys. Um, you know, one of the greatest players of all time in LeBron James, like we know nobody's going to stop them, but these are bodies, man, that you can throw and be very, very confident at some of these high level players. Um, even if you go over in the East and you look directly in your own conference and you're looking at milwaukee you see Giannis Antetokounmpo and your entire front court um four players deep including siakam and scotty barnes at the four are probably some of the better players 
um, to get switched on to Giannis. You know what I mean? If Chris Middleton and Giannis are doing a screen and roll, well, you've got two of your best defenders on your team locking them up, which we saw when Kawhi was there. Him and Siakam, they were able to do that, especially with uh, the defensive scheme that they were running against Giannis. Now, I think Giannis has gotten better since then, um, and I think Giannis is a top three player in the NBA right now, but that does not mean that if you can have three of you know defensive player of the year potential players put on these guys that you're not in a good situation so playoff wise that looks great for them against the team that just won the finals right you even look against miami heat the team that precious achua came from you're okay with any of these three guys i think going on to or any of those four guys going on to jimmy butler um you're okay with them guarding um bam because they're all relatively big enough and play big enough and strong enough that they can guard um centers and or smaller centers like obviously if you were against like a taco fall who the cavaliers just picked up you're a, you know there's not much you can do about his size right i think you kind of have to realize that if he gets switched on to a small forward he's not the greatest player in the world but he's just big enough that like kind of like boban he can just kind of tap it in the basket right um but they're not going to run the offense through him, so it's not too much of a worry. You know what I mean? Like that's not your primary focus is to worry about a seven foot five or seven foot three guy and like Przingis or whatever. It's to worry about your every game stuff and your matchups, right? Because matchups can can make a big difference, especially in playoff series. And I think the Raptors probably come through this year and make the playoffs, especially if they can go back to Toronto and play there rather than playing down in Tampa, um, because I think that that's probably an underrated part of why they under under um like underproved under i cannot think of the word that i'm trying to look for um underachieved last year there we go yes i think that's part of the reason why they kind of underachieved last year but um you know i mean like Drogic, he doesn't really want to be there so you'll probably maybe he's coming off the bench for you um as a good scoring guard and then you move him at the deadline for some assets we know masai is probably not just going to buy him out that man loves to not not quite like he's he's smart in using his assets whereas um sam presti over with the okc thunder he just loves to trade his assets and get more assets that man is the the king uh get assets and flip them as kot 4 q would say but we already know kenny kenny got that phrase coined anyways um so yeah i think I think Achua is a super underrated pickup. I could see him also being in the running for most improved player this year. Um, most likely, you're looking at like probably a 14 point per game score and maybe eight rebounds per game. 14 and eight is what I would predict from him this upcoming season. Um, if he's playing a little under 30 minutes, if he plays over 30 minutes, I could see a 15 and 10 guy. Um, he's a little bit small, so to say that he's going to get a ton of rebounds, I don't think is really it. I think it's going to be a very team effort, and I think it'll work well as a team effort front court rebounding group. Um, but I don't expect him to be a super high rebound snagger like you would see from a guy like Ennis Cantor or Steven Adams. It's going to go out there and really go after those boards with their big bodies, right? Um, I would expect more of pressures to be you know kind of a team rebounder maybe this play is boxing out so og can get it or whatever um but yeah i did you know he could pretty much add 10 points and double his rebounds and that would put you very solid in the case for most improved if he ends up averaging 18 or something and has a bigger jump than i think that he could have um that would almost probably secure it for him especially with the fan base the raptors have we know that that's going to push him into the media a lot um maybe not mainstream media but it's going to push him in like youtube media which um i feel like basketball youtube media um has really um kind of taken a, a large rise and um you know i think we we all form at least some opinions just from it which hopefully you guys can kind of understand my perspective on opinions and stuff like that but yeah super excited to see what achua can do this year i think he's probably one of if not the most underrated pickup from the off season that nobody really talked about um and so i wanted to kind of come in and just you know try and try and bring some awareness to to what Achua I think can do this upcoming season. So if you guys enjoyed, this has been NBA Now. It's been your boy Dom, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.